Welcome to the InfoWars Nightly News. It is Tuesday, July 26th, 2016, and I'm Leanne McAdoo. Here's what's coming up tonight. Tonight. Democrats have been so busy banging gavels, parading celebrities, and shushing their supporters that they never got around to speaking about terror attacks. Then, while WikiLeaks states there is no proof the DNC email hack was done by Russians, Nancy Pelosi claims to know Putin is behind it. And Hillary's health comes into question again. <laughs> That's next. <laughs> so talk about Vice President Burns. Did you talk about Vice President while we're all waiting with bated breath of who are the Democrats going to choose for their nominee, hmm, oh my goodness, I wonder. Of course, they threw Bernie a bone and said they threw his hat there in for the nomination. We'll just have to wait and see what they decide. But let's get on to what's going on in the world today, something that they will not speak to you about there at the DNC. Of course, another terror attack. This took place in Normandy, Normandy today. Uh, it was a terror attack, took place in a church. Uh, two ISIS knife men made their way into this church during morning mass. They took several people hostage. They forced a priest there to kneel. Uh, they filmed the attack. Then they did a an Arabic sermon around the altar there before they slit this Catholic priest's throat at the altar in front of some nuns as well as some other people. A nun there is fighting for her life after this attack. Uh, but now security sources are saying, hey, well, we actually knew this guy. One of the murderers was a convicted terrorist who is being monitored with an electronic tag. He should have been living at home with his parents. Oh my goodness. Dare you say that these terrorists don't pay attention to the rules and they have a tag on them, but still they go out and commit murder? Now, these are just teenagers, okay? One of them is 19, uh, the guy that they had, the uh, Adele Karmish. He was the one who was being tagged. And another suspect is only 17 years old. He's a relative. So these are just young men, not women and children, who came through exploiting this refugee crisis as we reported before last year, everyone said that your fears are unfounded. There's no way that there are going to be any jihadists coming through. Well, now we are seeing just a rolling out of these terrorist attacks taking place there in France, Germany. They've opened up their doors to these people. And then this is the repayment they, that they get. But they're telling Europe, you know, don't worry about it. Your fears are unfounded. Um, and here's the political correctness gone absolutely mad. Now the German MP is actually being critical of the police for daring to kill the crazed axe-wielding jihadists earlier last week. So this was Germany. They've experienced now three terror attacks in a week. One of those occurred on a train in Bavaria. This was an 18-year-old Afghan refugee. He attacked people in a train car. He was swinging an axe and screaming Allah Akbar. Surprise, surprise. Well, when the train stopped, the terrorist tried to escape, so he started attacking the police who had surrounded him. And of course, seeing no other recourse, the police shoot him dead. So then the leader of the Green Party tweets out, well, why could the attacker not have been incapacitated without killing him? Questions, questions indeed. So of course, the, the police respond. The German police union says, if police officers are attacked in this manner, they're not gonna engage in Kung Fu. Unfortunately, sometimes it ends in the death of the perpetrator. This will not change. So here again, we're seeing sympathy for these refugees. Oh my goodness, this poor guy, he was probably just bullied as a teen and he decided to take it out on innocent people in a train car with an ax because that's what I did when I grew up being bullied as a child. I turned into a raging psychopath. No, that's not the new normal, but they want you to believe that. And they're also trying to twist who the victim is here. We spoke with Paul Joseph Watson earlier on the radio show today, and he said, you would not believe the gaslighting and the propaganda that the people in Europe are being subjected to. Uh, just like they changed the headline, Syrian migrant killed by bomb blast. 
Yeah, because it was a, attached to his chest when he set the bomb off in the market. My goodness, what is going on here? And now with some more gaslighting, the German government is claiming that this surge in attacks has nothing to do with the refugee policy. And this is, of course, because Angela Merkel's popularity is dropping like a rock. Um, this was after a suicide bomber on Sunday injured 12 people at a musical festival in Bavaria. On Friday, a shooter killed nine people at a shopping center. And of course, before that, there was the axe attack. So they say, you know, this was just a series of unfortunate random events. This is Stephen Mayer. He's a lawmaker for the Christian Democratic Party there. And he says, you know, there's a rising nervousness among our public. The events of Friday have nothing to do with our refugee policy. It's completely wrong to blame Angela Merkel and her refugee policy for this incident. And the German interior minister went on to say, we should not hold refugees under a general suspicion, even if there are investigations in individual cases. Total criminal actions here. Deny, 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 as well as gaslight the public and tell them they're crazy for daring to think, you know, maybe this is a problem importing all these people here who don't want to assimilate with our culture and who, in fact, hate our culture and want to kill us. Now, this was something, like I mentioned, that they did not talk about thus far at the DNC. They had 61 speeches on their first day, not one mention of terrorism. They were too busy talking about opening up the borders and how great illegal immigration is and gun grabbing and, um, you know, joking about the fact that democracy is dead in this country. Even Bernie Sanders bows his head in shame. Uh, of course, <laughs> as at the top of Drudge right now, they say at least they finally managed to get some U.S. flags today because everyone noticed that they were missing yesterday. But you saw some other uh, the Palestinian flag, the LGBT flag flying there. No American flags. Oh, but they fixed that little problem today. Now, the Clinton campaign said that they're braced for more DNC leaks. You know, I thought Russia didn't hack into Clinton's server, but I think we're going to find out that that's absolutely not true. Uh, but they're saying, of course, these are timed because Russia wants to throw the election because they like Donald Trump. They have some sort of a good relationship, Donald Trump and Putin. And so, of course, that's what they're really pushing out, saying, you know, people need to understand when these leaks happened. This is what they're designed to do. Uh, Vladimir Putin's regime is trying to throw the election. Of course, Nancy Pelosi comes out. She knows for sure Putin hacked the DNC. She said there's no doubt the Russians hacked and provided WikiLeaks with this trove of embarrassing emails. And of course, there's no confirmation of this, but it doesn't matter. They're just going to run with it anyway because they need a boogeyman and it's always going to be Russia. Trevor Tim writes for The Guardian. He says, it's amazing how quickly the media are willing to forego any skepticism, jump to conspiracy tinge conclusions where Putin is involved. He's already been linked to everything from Brexit, Jeremy Corbyn, Greece, and Spain. People treat him like he's this omnipotent mastermind who secretly and effortlessly controls world events. Maybe we should stop giving him so much credit. Maybe we should. Now, of course, WikiLeaks' Julian Assange has come out and saying this is a total diversion being pushed by the Hillary Clinton campaign. He said there's no proof whatsoever that he received any emails from the Russians. The real story is what these emails contain, and they show collusion at the very top of the Democratic Party to derail Sanders' campaign, which is absolutely true. But even now, Bernie Sanders is coming out and saying, initially he was saying that they, they didn't give him a fair shot, and now he's coming out saying, um, you know, seven people in an email string couldn't derail my campaign. And so it's just total collusion. Bernie Sanders is a huge sellout. Margaret and I are going to talk about that more in the segment coming up. But even the Kremlin has come out and said that these claims are absurd and they go on to mock the American uh, election cycle this year, calling us obsessed, basically, with references to Russia in this campaign. And a great article coming out of The Federalist, you know, they talk about a friendly reminder, Bernie Sanders is a bigger authoritarian than Donald Trump. And in fact, he's pushing a lot of policies why wouldn't Russia be supporting him, not Donald Trump? Because he is the one that is pushing these same a political revolution to transform America, raises up his fist at the end, never once uttering the words freedom, liberty, or the Constitution. And he goes on to talk about how the Supreme Court's main function is to overturn the First Amendment so the state can ban books and movies, critical of the Democratic Party, and... It could also be useful in overriding religious freedom and empowering the president to change the immigration status of millions of people unilaterally. So we can already see where things are headed. I wake up every morning 
in a house that was built by slaves. And what does the disgusting DNC and a French priest killed by ISIS have in common? Plenty. While performing morning mass, Jacques Hamel, Catholic priest, and two nuns were held hostage for roughly an hour and viciously attacked in a church in Normandy, France. The two attackers, one of them followed by police for over a year and a half, brutally slit the priest's throat and seriously injured the nun. As the Telegraph reports, both of the attackers shouted Daesh, which is the actual name for ISIS, ISIL, IS, or whatever it is the mind-controlling politicians would have us all call it. And right on schedule, French President Hollande offered more vague statements about declaring war on terrorism, saying, Today we must be aware that the terrorists will not give up as long as we don't stop them. That's our will, and that's what we are doing tirelessly. While Marine Le Pen, president of the far-right National Party of France, observed, the responsibility of all those who have governed us for over 30 years is immense. To watch them talking is revolting. This attack follows the Bastille Day horror in East France. Clearly, France is under attack, as is Germany, after a recent wave of jihad attacks in Bavaria. But German Chancellor Angela Merkel will hear none of that, as Bloomberg reported. Government spokeswoman Ulrike Demmer told reporters on Monday the four assaults don't offer a clear picture about motives. There is a rising nervousness among our public. Mayor, who sits on Parliament's Internal Affairs Committee, told BBC Radio on Monday, you have to differentiate. The events of Friday have nothing to do with our refugee policy. It is completely wrong to blame Angela Merkel and her refugee policy for this incident. Back in the United States, there wasn't one mention of radical jihadist terrorism during the first day of the DNC. Thank you or not, as the case may be, Ridiculous. We must get big money out of politics and root out corruption. Hillary will fight to overturn Citizens United and return this government to the people. If you believe that America must work for all of us, not just for the rich and powerful. We have got to elect Hillary Clinton and Tim Kaine. <laughs> Brothers and sisters. In fact, Hillary's running mate, TPP supporting Tim Kaine, declared in Spanish in an interview with Telemundo that illegal immigrants would be legalized within the first hundred days of Hillary's reign. While, as Breitbart reported, Hillary plans on admitting 420,000 Syrian refugees during her first term, expanding Obama's unconstitutional executive amnesty, dissolving the U.S. borders, freezing deportations, closing detention centers, and giving a full path to citizenship and Obamacare to illegal immigrants, far surpassing the chaos Obama has already introduced to the United States. Hillary Clinton wants to one-up Angela Merkel to impress her globalist masters. Screw the American people. Anyone can see that it is the immigration policy of Merkel that has brought the recent horror down on Europe. And the only solution is to immediately stop the flow of migration and begin the monumental process of mass deportation. This is jihad by immigration, or al-Hijra, as it is known by Muslims. Who in their right mind would allow a hostile enemy to move their soldiers and their families into their country? Now is it crystal clear why there was no mention of ISIS during the first night of the Democratic National Convention? John Bound for Infowars.com. Joining me now is Ashley Beckford, and we're going to talk about what's going on in Turkey. So we are witnessing a once major ally of the United States being turned over to an authoritarian religious dictatorship. And there are reports now that Erdogan is actually cleaning house to form a perfect Islamic state. So this is absolutely frightening. Of course, we all watched in real time this failed coup taking place in Turkey uh, July 15th and 16th. A lot of conspiracy theories surrounding what happened there, uh, but it seems that Erdogan had already prepared the names of people that he wanted to purge from um, his military as well as his government. So a lot of people are saying that he staged it himself. 
to gobble up even more power. Um, so, Ashley, talk a little bit about some of the things that are going on. Well, that's right, Leanne. What I found most disturbing about uh, the situation here in Turkey right now is that uh, we all know, as you said, the July 15th coup uh, occurred, and uh, they're blaming uh, U.S.-based Islamic cleric Fatela Gulen uh, for that. And uh, Erdogan, what he actually did was he sent out his anti-terror prosecutors, and uh, he sent out arrest warrants for over 40 journalists. So he's actually um, going ahead and uh, doing a brazen purge based on political affiliation. So this is a big draconian clampdown kind of on our freedom of speech, um, you know, just generally, uh, because if someone is going to do this in a situation where, um, you know, there's a coup going on, it could happen at any time. And so that's something that's concerning to me. Also, it affects their uh, wanting to get into the EU because right now, you know, with a coup going on, obviously that's going to mess up their bid uh, for getting into the EU. Right. They're obviously going to be moving further away from the West and more so getting involved uh, with some of the conflicts there in the Middle East. And we've always kind of looked to Turkey, at least, to kind of keep the peace, I guess, keep harmony between Islam and the West. And now they're saying, well, no, we want to form the most perfect Islamic state. Of course, there was a lot of pushback there of, you know, why are you helping the Kurds um, to defeat ISIS? But, I mean, we've seen the arrest or suspension of 57,000 soldiers, police, judges, civil servants. 62 children have been arrested for treason that wow. were part of a military school. And there are reports of them torturing detainees. So this is absolutely insane. People are saying that it was Fatal um His lackeys were kind of fearing Erdogan. And so they staged an ill-prepared coup. But that's just not likely. What we're probably seeing here is uh, Erdogan, who really wanted to go ahead and siphon off a lot of power for himself. Thank you, Ashley. Now stick around, because coming up, we've got more reports. Madam Chair, I move that the convention suspend the procedural rules. I move that all votes, all votes cast by delegates be reflected in the official record and I move that Hillary Clinton be selected as the nominee of the Democratic Party for President of the United States. David Knight for InfoWars.com. They have now made it official. Hillary Clinton is the Democrat nominee. They had the state of Vermont pass so that Bernie Sanders could come out and say that they should waive the tally and make it unanimous that Hillary Clinton is the nominee. Of course, we saw the signs that said, do the most good. That's the best they can come up with for unity. In other words, Hillary's not all that bad. <laughs> that's, the, that's the message for unity that they're telling people. So we're gonna talk to delegates here who are for Bernie. We're gonna see if they really are going to buy this, if they're going to throw away the idea of TPP. If they're gonna throw away the idea that the uh, bankers should be in charge of everything. Because of course, it was Bill Clinton who created the consolidation of the two big to fail banks who shut down Glass-Steagall. In spite of what Elizabeth Warren says, you're not going to see any kind of economic reform from uh, Hillary Clinton. You're going to see Wall Street very happy at this nomination. For InfoWars.com, I'm David Ike.
Joe Biggs with InfoWars.com. We're standing outside of the Wells Fargo Center where the DNC is currently taking place and everyone is screaming, hell no, DNC, we won't vote for Hillary. And another side note, notice how the wall has blocked up the entire highly large group of crazy liberals. All right, so here we yeah, are. Yeah, this metal box all around the city in 100 degree weather. All right, so we're downtown in uh, Philly. This is Center City. We have City Hall right here. And how many people do you think are out here right now? Man. I Thousands. Haven't, I haven't really gotten this. The crowd is they're grow It started out fairly small at uh, uh, Broad and Diamond. It has grown considerably along the course of the march. So you guys have marched all the way from Broad and Diamond with this, and you're right. saying this is a symbolism of the death of the Democratic Party uh, due to the fact that the DNC and democracy, due to the fact that the the DNC leaks came out to show that there was collusion against Bernie right. Sanders, what the right. people wanted. He was a populist choice, right. obviously. So, you know, tell me, chair. what pisses you off about Hillary Clinton the most? Her lies. Than, her lies, and she acts like she got to apologize and just say it's okay, you know, I'm sorry. What do you think about... Stealing elections. What do you think about elections. a person like her coming out on TV and saying... You know, being asked, do you think you've ever lied before? She goes, no, I don't think I've ever lied before. I mean, yeah. I would have said, yes, I lied. I think that's why she coughs all the time, because that's her body's natural rea reaction right. to being right. such a lying right. ass human being. Right. I mean, it's possible, or she could pay people to, you know what I mean, teach her how not to lie, but I guess she's not smart enough. You'd think that. being a Clinton and having that political privilege your entire life, you'd learn to, uh, to do it a lot better, but obviously not. So what do we have? We have the uh, upside down. Donkeys. 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 The Philly donkeys, we got them all over, all over, you know? Yeah. You know? <laughs> got one over there, two over there. So what are you hoping that will uh, be able to happen this week? <sighs> I hope that Bernie Sanders wins the Democratic nomination. I hope yeah. that there's no way that Trump will ever become close to the presidency. No. You know, it's amazing. I've gone to so many different rallies, from Trump rallies, to Bernie rallies, to Clinton rallies. And Bernie and Trump both can fill out huge sports arenas. Right. But Hillary always gets a building besides a giant sports arena, and she has to pay people to come in. Right. You know, right. The block in this country is the independent party. The two-party system barely stands a chance to the independent party. This is an election cycle of insiders and outsiders. And when I say insiders and outsiders, I mean independence versus everyone else in the, the two-party system. Now, are you going to end up voting for Hillary if she becomes a nominee? Are you guys going to hope that Bernie's going to go the other way and then you guys can get another? It's delusional for me to think that someone's going to do the opposite of what they're saying they're doing. Hillary needs to say the things that I need to know, I need to hear, before I can vote for someone like her. I feel like this she, is this is the same politics as usual. I don't I don't want to participate in the politics as usual. The I feel like Hillary Clinton's the kind of politician that she walks in front of people, oh, she shit. says what she knows they want to hear, and then she goes back behind it and then says F all these people, screw you know, these people. Yeah, she throws them under the bus. It's the way it's the political way. This is our political system. It is set up, it is the politics of fear. They're slinging mud at each other. The Democrats sling mud at the, the, the Democrats, or the Democrats sling mud at the Republicans, Republicans, vice versa. We can't do that. We have Donald Trump and Hillary Clinton, the two like most unfavorable Zero. candidates. Hillary Clinton is the most unfavorable candidate in the Democratic Party right now. They, that is a product of voting through fear mongering. Vote for the greater good. Have you seen our trucks driving around town that say Hillary for prison? I have, yes. Oh, that was yours. Yeah. Nice. Well, that's your well, my, yeah. my husband had one for Let me hear you guys say He's Hillary for it. prison. <laughs> Hillary for prison. There you go. Hillary for prison. That's my money. Hillary for prison. Thank you, man. You know what, though, the so ironic part about that is we are against privatizing prisons. Yeah. This is also we feel that strongly about her. Yeah. That she's done wrong and she needs to acknowledge that. You know, well, I mean, how can, how can you have the, the director of the FBI come out? 
and, and simply like the first well, the 10 minutes lay out every reason why she should be yeah. thrown in jail and then go, I don't think anyone's going to prosecute her and then walk away. Why, why is it that she can stand there and say, we need to have uh, people that the Guccifer, for example, the hacker, held responsible for his actions, but she gets a free pass for her actions. Why is it that the DNC gets a free pass for their actions? They rigged the entire election. This whole thing should be thrown away. Provisional ballots. We had, we had massive, massive voter suppression and election fraud in various states. But Treyas did far less and got more punishment, which is ridiculous. She's done far worse and deserves no, far more. No, there are so no, many politicians no. that should be in jail. We have, we have like George Bush, got a free pass. He should have been in jail. Hillary Clinton, free pass. Why is it that the Obama administration was one of the most like aggressive in, in putting people in jail for breaching national security, and yet they let Hillary Clinton they let her go scot-free. Why is it that she is above the law? One question. What is she going to do running us or taking over the United States when her husband cheats on her again? Are we going to fall apart? Huh? Are we? This has been Joe Bates with InfoWars.com, Center City, Philadelphia, where democracy is apparently gone. <laughs> Joe Biggs here with InfoWars.com, and I'm outside of the Wells Fargo Center where the DNC is currently taking place. And why are you so emotional right now, ma'am? Because I have I got all these people out here who, are, who want to tell superdelegates what they really want, and yet we've been shouting here for days. I don't have a voice anymore, and they still haven't listened. So do you feel that the DNC, now that you've seen the leaks, have kind of been pitted against you, and are they've yeah. taken your voice away, and... That's why you're so emotional because, you know, for once you had a chance to vote and you believed in something and now it's kind of being stolen from you. Yeah, I mean, I don't know how, I don't know how to say it. Like, the DNC is just shit, honestly. Like, I, well, I mean, I can't say that for everyone in the DNC, but Schultz. Wells Fargo Center where the DNC is currently taking place. Now I'm standing outside where tons of Bernie Sanders supporters are currently over the fences keeping the people out. They're shaking it, screaming, hell no DNC, we won't vote for Hillary. And now I'm with a 19 year old right here, his name's Joey. He's a local. He's holding a sign that says 19 year old against globalism. So tell me about uh, why you're out here and uh, what this all means to you. What are you trying to do? Well, you know, I came out here I mostly not supporting a candidate. I, but if someone asks, I'll tell them I'm voting for Trump. Because if you tell these guys you're voting for Trump, they won't even talk to you. So, you know, I'm out here trying to raise awareness for globalism for these liberals over here, you know? I'm trying to teach liberals about globalism and the hugest threat to Western civilization as we know it. And I've been walking around and I'm getting thumbs up from Bernie supporters, liberals, even a couple anarchists. Not a many, but a couple. They, these, these people don't know about globalism. I, they're just going along with, ide with anyone's ideas around here, I'm thinking. Either that or they truly do understand globalism. And Bernie supporters and Trump supporters have that common ground, which is globalism. And I, that's why I'm here, man. I'm just trying to, just trying to have a good conversation. Got, got a lot of good conversation. Seen some communists, a lot of anarchists. About like seven communists, straight up Soviet Union flags, man. It's been crazy. So, uh, what are you telling people when you uh, engage in a debate? What kind of uh, things are you? Uh, what are your talking points you're bringing up? Well, 
for, well, first off, they, I usually How about like this? them. Say I'm a ahead. communist right now and you're trying to tell me about this. Give me your spill. Tell me what it is. How, how would you bring awareness to what it is you're trying to get out? Well, if it was a communist, he already has his mind set up. He's he's brainwashed by cultural Marxism. There he doesn't go. even realize it. These people don't even realize that they've been brainwashed by an old school Soviet tactic that's been gone for like 20 years and it's falling into place. These anarchists, these cultural Marxists, they don't even realize that they're spewing slavery and, you know, all, all the things that come with communism. And I'll, and I'll come up to him. I'll ask them, what's up with the red flag? And they'll say socialism. I th so I'm starting to think socialism is the beginning stages of communism. Step. Yeah, the it's the first step. It's the baby steps. But we've seen some extremes. I've seen, uh, got a lot of pictures here of uh, people with, you know, uh, masks on, black bandanas, red flags. Here's the coffin. Here's the, the coffin. Death of the DNC. Death of the DNC. Now, a lot of these people will agree with me, though. No one's voting for Hillary. I've been around. Everyone is Bernie Sanders. And now they're all starting to go to someone named Jill, the Green Party leader. So, I mean, no one here, I'll tell you, about like 10,000 strong yesterday and none of them were voting for uh, Hillary at all. It's a lot of anger out here. Well, there you have it, Joey, a local, teaching people about globalism outside of the DNC in South Philly. This has been Joe Biggs with Infowars.com in the middle of the hornet's nest. David Knight from InfoWars.com. We're here at the Philadelphia Convention, the Democrat Convention, and we're talking to an activist for the TPP. You are? Lauren Steiner from Los Angeles. Now, you've been a longtime TPP activist, you tell us. Tell us uh, what happened at this convention and where this is headed, you think? Okay, what we did last night, we did an action on the floor basically to bring the Trans-Pacific Partnership to the attention of the 15,000 media that are here and all of the audience around the world that are watching it. We did this because Senator Sanders did not bring the minority report on the Trans-Pacific Partnership to the floor for a floor fight. Um, there, uh, there were six minority reports. One of them was the High Tower Amendment, basically saying that the Trans-Pacific Partnership should not come for a vote before the lame duck Congress. You know that Obama and the Republican leadership have been pushing this for years. They were able to get fast track approved last year against almost every single Democrat. They rammed it through using every procedural trick in the book. <clears throat> and Bernie Sanders has been fighting these free trade agreements since they started. He spoke up against NAFTA in 1991. He was absolutely right about the effects of NAFTA and these free trade agreements. Since they were instituted, we've lost 57,000 factories have shut and 5 million high-paying American manufacturing jobs have gone overseas. So, as you say, I've been fighting the TPP since I found out about it. As you know, it's been negotiated in secret for eight years. But I found out about it in 2011. I've done several protests, one at a, a Barack Obama fundraiser in Beverly Hills, one at a Michelle Obama fundraiser in Hancock Park, one at a Hillary Clinton fundraiser in Beverly Hills, basically because I know that the media will not cover an issue like this, but they will cover when the president or Senator, Secretary Clinton comes into town. So we use that occasion to get it out to the, uh, to the public, at least in Los Angeles. Let's talk about the history of this a bit, because, uh, of course, you're talking about Bernie Sanders has been opposing this a long time, these trade deals, NAFTA deals. But, of course, also Donald Trump has done it. I mean, we see this happening now unprecedented pretty much. You talked about how the Republican establishment is really pushing hard for this, saying it's free trade, we want to have free trade. It's not free trade, it's managed trade, it's crony capitalism. Donald Trump has pointed this out. He took out ads 30 years ago talking about how NAFTA was a bad deal. It was put in with Bill Clinton. So how do you feel after you see Hillary was for it, then she was against it, now she's picked Cain as her VP, who is thoroughly in for all of these trade deals. How do you feel about that? Well, you know, that's why I was never for Hillary, and that's why I did a Hillary... Um you know, not ready for Hillary protests before I even joined Bernie's campaign. I think she's a neoliberal corporatist and a neoconservative warmonger, and I think she's very dangerous for this country. Now, Bernie Sanders, like you said, has been on the right side of this issue. We haven't even improved our trade balance. In fact, it's gone the other way. With every single country, they told us that about Korea, they told us that about Central America, and what happens is we have less trade with them. It's really just a big giveaway from the multinational corporations. It's bad for workers, it's bad for consumers, 
consumers, it's bad for the environment, and it's bad for national sovereignty because it makes corporations more powerful than, uh, than uh, uh, governments. And we've already seen that with NAFTA, and we see that with these uh, trade agreements, so TPP, TTIP, we see that the corporations have written these agreements, uh, they bring these things up, and of course all these senators, Republican and Democrat, who voted for it, uh, the TPA essentially shuts down the whole process that you would have for uh, ratifying a treaty. They don't want to call them a treaty, they want to call it a trade agreement or it's a partnership, but it's a treaty when they go back and they look at NAFTA and these, uh, you know, these adjudication ceremonies that they have, which are really uh, you know, an arbitration process with the corporation's uh, equal partners to the government. They call about a treaty uh, law negotiation, so they know these trade agreements, these partnerships are treaties. Well, actually, we act of the TPP, of the 28 chapters in the TPP, only two of them actually relate to trade. And we have bilateral trade agreements with most of these countries anyway. So this particular agreement is just to ensure corporate protections and to make them above the law. And as you said, these international trade tribunals are kangaroo courts because the judges are not elected by the people to whom they're accountable. They are uh, corporate lawyers who alternate between judging these cases and representing the very corporations. Yeah. So who do you think they're going to side with? Just like you said, the arbitration process, which we're all now forced to sign these arbitration agreements, signing the way our, our, our rights to have a court trial. And it's, it's horrific. Well, there you have it, Bernie bros. Bernie bowed out. He said he wanted to go ahead and suspend the process and uh, nominate Hillary Clinton. She's making her story. She is going to be the first woman to get the Democratic nomination for a major political campaign. A lot of uh, Bernie supporters actually walked out. They're chanting, this is what democracy looks like. They were rightly upset. Here they put all their faith in Bernie Sanders, who says he's going to change the establishment, fight against the machine. and then he in just one instance turns around and says, nope, now you need to support the candidate who is the most establishment ever, taking big money. Uh, <laughs> Elizabeth Warren yesterday, jokingly, mm. I mean, she was serious, but it was a total joke saying that she wanted to get big money out of politics. I Oof. mean, it's just, <clears throat> uh, here's the thing, is that it was never about the revolution. It was always about the agenda. And the agenda was to push the party further to the left, it's now being called the most progressive platform they've ever run on. This is absolutely frightening. And hopefully all those disillusioned Bernie supporters can see that perhaps this isn't the route they want to see the country take. Well, they are understandably upset. And uh, there's no question that uh, the, the Clintons openly stole the nomination from Sanders, who annihilated her. You know, InfoWars, they were on the ground at the DNC. I was watching some of these reports. 80 to 1. They couldn't find a single, you know, Clinton supporter. And when they did, they were so out of their minds. You know, they weren't coherent. I really couldn't understand what they were saying. But the Bernie people were so passionate. And, Leon, that goes hand in hand with what we're seeing coming out of um, polling numbers in specifically 11 states. I found this lawsuit exposing a nationwide wide voter rigging issue with the DNC in the primaries that could actually derail her if it's successful. But in 11 states, 11 different states, not just one, 11, uh, the exit polls and the electronic votes that totaled, they were different uh, the morning after the primaries, which means that there is an issue with the electronic voting system. Oh, you don't say. Thumbs on the scale. We didn't tell you that that was going to happen all the time. Of course, these electronic voting machines coming out of Brazil where they said if that was the election was swayed there as well due to these <laughs> electronic voting machines. It's all rigged. And as we know from the DNC leaks, the whole system was rigged. And perhaps that's why Bernie wanted to go ahead and suspend that vote count, because perhaps he did know that he had enough delegates there to right. go ahead and sway this election. Oh, there's no question. If you look at his numbers and the DNC from the very beginning, and we know a lot of this because of WikiLeaks, you and I covered this yesterday, you know, they've gone after his religion, the way that he looks, the way that he behaves, tried to marn him, keeping, out of, keeping him out of a voter database for unethical behavior when he didn't do anything. You know, they've been- They're they the ones hand, being unethical. <laughs> they've had their hand on the scale since the beginning of this. It was always her nomination. It was about keeping him out of the process. They underestimated the, the revolution aspect of him, if you will. And what's baffling to me, he's calling for his supporters to back Clinton, the ultimate corrupt candidate. I don't think there's been a more corrupt candidate in history, but you know, the spirit to resist tyranny would be on the side of Trump. And even the Clinton News Network is saying that Trump is in, you know, ahead of Clinton. So let's just hope that those really disenfranchised people, it's not too late to wake up here. You know, your party screwed you. Your party absolutely kicked you out. And you've got people like, you know, it really upsets me. This this comedian, this Sarah um, Silverman. Sarah Silverman gets on the stage 
non-scripted and she says you guys need to give it up already it's ridiculous they think you're ridiculous that's what she just said you're ridiculous I mean, right how on. dare you have passion how dare you try to fight for democracy how dare you look at the facts and see that this system is totally rigged you know just a month or so ago bernie is speaking out saying that this whole system is rigged it was the election was rigged from the start the dnc was obviously supporting hillary clinton and then when you have facts and you have a pop, um, an activated populace that wants to back you, mm -hmm. then you just bow out and you say, you know what, it's fine. Go ahead and support Hillary Clinton. She needs this. He wasn't really going to do anything to change the establishment. He never had it in him. Mm -hmm. He was probably surprised he even got that far because it was never about Bernie getting this election. It was about getting Hillary in, <clears throat> forcing her to be even more progressive and take on some of those policies that aren't going to work. We're already $18 trillion in debt. How are we gonna pay for free college? Well, not only that, but you know, I just wanna say, and it's comforting to, to look at this because their paradigm, it is collapsing, obviously. You know, people are awake, they understand what's going on, and the tyranny, the spirit to resist it is here. And I just, it, it's my hope that his supporters, you know, those 80 to one on the ground, they realize maybe we shouldn't listen to him, maybe he betrayed us, he folded like a cheap suit, and therefore, Maybe we Maybe need it was another a lie candidate. the whole time. Correct, right. correct. And you know, I, I've seen, I have some friends, you know, and they, they're really, I like passion, I like honesty, but we're talking about somebody who was the pushing a communist agenda. Do you really want to live in a communist country? That's the bottom line. And you know, that really says something that people are so poor, they're so fed up, you know, they're so disenfranchised that they're willing to, to, to accept communism as opposed to just running with the truth and liberty. Right. It's amazing. He is pushing policies that have failed worldwide over and over again. It's mm -hmm. one of the most oppressive regimes that's out there, mm -hmm. uh, people that are involved in these communist regimes. And of course, people do not understand that because they're not getting the accurate history. Mm -hmm. They're only getting that sort of whitewashed version of it, um, being taught to hate their own country and oh, what it stands course. for, not being educated on the fact that all, all countries um, that are you know, in some sort of a powerful role mm -hmm. have all gotten there. Right. Through conquer, and <laughs> I mean, conquest. I mean, and through liberty and through a true spirit of liberty. You know, I, I have a poli sci. I love poli sci, and they push and glamorize Marxism in college like it's unreal. You mm -hmm. really have to kind of go, wait a second, this is this is glamorous. This is really what we want. We want a Marxist state, and then ultimately a communistic state where we have no property, no individuality, no rights. Really, yeah. really. But you better be backing Hillary Clinton, or you're ridiculous. Right, exactly. No, it is, it's absolutely insane, just the amount of people that buy into this, even though it's killed hundreds of millions of people. And I actually got in an argument with a, a kid that was pushing socialism where he admitted ultimately they want communism, mm -hmm. but he's sitting there telling me that it, communism, socialism hasn't killed hundreds of thousands of people worldwide, mm -hmm. and that uh, capitalism, obviously the big experiment here in the US has failed, mm -hmm. and I'm thinking, Okay, it's only been tried here. It, it hasn't failed. It's lifted billions of people out of poverty. Mm -hmm. But communism, over and over again, has literally failed mm -hmm. so many times. They need to be mad at the elites that have hijacked our nation, the globalists that have that have taken over and have actually dictated. You know, they've had such a strong hand in our own economy. That's who they need to be angry at, not the capitalists trying to make money and support people and create jobs. You know, 85% of businesses in, their, in this country are small businesses, eight employees or less. And those are the people on the ground, the true capitalists, if you will, that are employing people. Oftentimes they give up health insurance for themselves just so that they can have it for their employees, giving up vacations. That's the mark of somebody that has a true spirit of liberty, who believes in the system and creates jobs. Right, and that's the crony capitalism that you need to be fighting against, mm -hmm. which of course we talk about that all the time. That is wrong, putting uh, your corporate profits over the people. Mm -hmm. And that's, I think people should rightly be angry about that. But the answer is not to give all of the power to produce to a corrupt government. Right. That's what That was the main problem I had with Bernie Sanders from the get-go. It's like, yes, I admire your passion. I like some of the policies that you're putting out there, but you want to give all the power to the corrupt government that's already in place. So, you know, a lot of uh, Sanders diehards are saying he didn't convince any of us, <clears throat> and their reaction, uh, reaction to his speech is like, how could you let us down? You totally failed us. We put mm -hmm. our faith in you. Oh, he did. And, and he turned out to be a total sellout. Mm -hmm. And then, you know, they have papers coming out saying, well, he didn't sell out because he managed to 
pushed the $15 minimum wage. He managed to push the party further to the left, um, get some of the things he wanted there in the rules. Right. So. He was even calling delegates, telling them not to, you know, to comply. He was personally calling delegates on the floor, telling them to comply with this new mandate that, oh, yeah, Hillary Clinton, it's, it's more important to be Donald Trump than it is to actually stand for something. Right. And, you know, understandably, they're upset. They're under and he, his quote. I am so proud to stand with her. I'm with her. Really? Right. When okay. just like weeks ago, he was bashing her, saying she was unfit to be the president and right. how terrible she was. Total flip flop, <laughs> total sellout, because this was about the agenda. And here you have all these people that are don't make a lot of money paying into this, mm -hmm. into his ideas, believing in something for the first time ever. Mm -hmm. And they just go ahead and take your money. And you've basically all been sold out. But at least you didn't sell your soul like Bernie Sanders did. Thank you so much. And. <laughs> We are going to be having a marathon 28-hour yeah. broadcast tomorrow. You and I are going to be going live uh, from are. 7 to 8, and we'll be popping in and out all throughout the day. It's going to be super exciting. That's going to start at 11 a.m. Central with the Alex Jones Show. Uh, but we are going to have so much fun. I'm going to be hosting the uh, Magic Mystery Hour from 10 to 2. Billy Corgan's going to be calling in and many, many other surprise guests. It's going to be so fantastic. Thank you all so much for tuning in tonight, and we'll see you on the flip side. Yeah.